Welcome to Policy On Demand. I'm Sindhu Bloom. It is the week of June 10th, and this is your Monday briefing. We are now 147 days out from the presidential election, and in that time, Congress is scheduled to be in session for 42 days. And this week, both the House and Senate are in session. Before we get into what's happening in Washington this week, two brief items. We've been anticipating additional administrative guidance from the OECD on the Pillar 2 global minimum tax addressing deferred taxes And we may see that this week. And Wednesday, all eyes will be on the Consumer Price Index announcement and a briefing by Fed Chairman Jerome Powell and what all of that will mean for inflation and interest rates. And now I would like to welcome Janice Mays, former Democratic Chief Counsel and Staff Director for the House Ways and Means Committee and currently Managing Director in PwC's Tax Policy Services Practice. Janice, it is so good to see you. Thanks for inviting me. And I want to point out, you've been on sabbatical for a month, so I think I I can safely say that a lot of people here are very happy to see you come back here. (laughs) Well, thanks for that, too. It was fun to be away. It's always fun to be home again. Good. I'm glad. All right, let's get started. So the fiscal year ends in less than four months, and the evergreen topic of government funding is front and center again. Congress is focused on funding for FY 2025. You spent a number of years on Capitol Hill working with the appropriations process. So why should companies be monitoring this year's process and how could it affect tax policy? Well, this year, even the appropriators don't expect to finish any of these bills before the election, and they'll be working on them in December in the lame duck session. So the first thing that it might affect is it might become a vehicle to do a few, at least, of the tax issues that people care about this year and would like to get done before the big legislation in 2025. So it might be that engine that delivers in the at the end of the year. And second, Treasury and IRS, their funding levels, what they can spend their money on, what they cannot spend money on, all influences the the implementation and the enforcement of tax policy. It potentially changes things. Okay. And last week, a bill was approved that would reduce FY 2025 funding for the IRS by nearly 20% to $10.1 billion. What could this mean for long-term funding for the IRS if we see a Republican sweep in November? Well, this year, I think the Democrats once again will fight this effort off and the IRS will probably get normal spending unless the IRS decides some of that money that was given to it, that extra money, from the Democrats when they were in charge can't be spent this year. And then they might negotiate on that piece of things. But it does show you that if Republicans run the tables in that next election, have the House, the Senate, and the presidency, they will desire, and I think they will achieve significant cuts in IRS funding. And then the same scenario where Republicans have um, House, Senate, and the White House, there was another bill that zeroed out federal funding for the OECD. And in that scenario, what does that mean for U.S. relations with the OECD? Well, this is also something House Republicans tried to do last year. I don't think they will succeed this year. They might get a small cut for OECD, but they will not get complete zeroing out of the American contribution, the U.S. contribution to that. But they're trying to send a message to the OECD. They want some friction because they don't like those international tax proposals, especially Pillar 2's under tax profits rule and potentially how the non-refundable U.S. tax credits get treated. And they want the OECD to know that if they are in charge in all of the bodies, that they will be significantly cutting if the OECD doesn't listen to them and change some of these things. So they're sending a shot across the bow right now that they will continue to send until they get the attention they want and the change they want. Okay, and last week, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen testified before a Senate subcommittee hearing on the FY 2025 budget request for the Treasury Department. What did we learn from Secretary Yellen's testimony, and how could this year's appropriations affect implementation of tax policy? Well, she pressed very hard to keep that extra IRS money that we were talking about. She emphasized taxpayer services and enforcement, closing the tax gap, information security, and intelligence. So she pushed pretty hard not to significantly cut those things. But the Congress will decide, even 
the kind of social riders it wants. The Congress can tell the IRS and Treasury that they can't implement certain things if they so choose. But many of the senators' questions, it was very interesting, they focused on those energy tax break issues. Senator Manchin is still angry over the implementation of the electric vehicle domestic content rules. And he expressed his unhappiness in that hearing quite strongly. And then other senators asked about the upcoming hydrogen credit rules, expecting more limitations than they were hoping to have in that. So it's interesting. There was a lot of focus over on some of the existing policy and how they feel the Treasury may not be implementing it as they think it should be. All right. Another topic that keeps coming up, the House passed tax bill. We are still looking for signals from Leader Schumer on whether he will bring it up. Um, but attention has turned to the 2025 tax reform efforts. Republican tax writers in both the House and Senate have formed tax teams or working groups to educate members, engage with stakeholders and help tax writers execute on next year's policy choices. So what are you hearing about similar efforts on the part of Democratic tax writers and how might companies engage with those members? Yes, it does appear that that House and Senate members are kind of moving ahead, looking toward 2025. And as they do this, the House Democrats have signaled very clearly that they're not going to be setting up separate teams. They're just going to work within the committee structure that they have. They feel like in the last Congress, when they were putting together their budget reconciliation bill, Build Back Better, that they went through this exercise and they put on the table what they thought they would want to be substitutes for the 2017 legislation going forward. So they're happy with their product at the moment. They don't feel they have to do anything kind of untoward, any extra thing to get ready for this. They're open for business. Business can come in and talk with them at any time, but they're not setting up a separate structure. The Senate is a little less clear for the Democrats. I really expect them to land where the House Democrats did, but it wouldn't be unexpected completely for them to find a couple of working groups in some new areas at this point. But I think they're just moving ahead with with the structure that they have. Janice, thank you so much for all of that. And again, it is great to have you back. It's always good to be back. This is home. Take care. For our viewers, you'll find in the description of this episode a link to register for an upcoming tax readiness webcast on Q2 tax accounting considerations and a link to the latest Week in Review with Mark Prater. And stay tuned for another Week in Review coming up this Friday. Thank you as always for joining us and we hope you have a great week. Take care.